Welcome compadres. If you're a structural analyst or an aspiring structural analyst, this is kind of the Bible that we use to cross-validate our finite element models that we build in industry. It's called Rourke's Formulas for Stress and Strain and you can find this resource online. Today I'm going to show an application of what's in this book to determine the max stress and max deflection of a pressure load on a plate simply supported on all four sides. But before I get into it, I just kind of want to look through this book and, and show you what it has. Um, and specifically, we're going to be looking at plates. Um, but you have a lot of things in this book uh, that uh, you can use to cross validate your FEA results. And it's given to you in a compact and simple form with simple formulas that you can code up. And we're going to code up one of those today. But you can see we have flat circular plates, we have a circular sections, we have semicircular plates, um, elliptical plates. And uh, this book has much more than that. But specifically, we're going to look at this case today, a rectangular plate that's got a uniform pressure load over its entire surface. And we're going to use these formulas to determine our max stress and max deflection. And so the idea is you would, uh, if you have modeled something and, and you have a uh, pressure load over a rectangular plate, well, you'd come to this source and, you know, develop a spreadsheet that gives you these calculations and you compare it to your FEA model results. So I'm going to go ahead and step into the Excel spreadsheet to show you how this is set up and how this is coded up. So this is how the spreadsheet is set up for a simply supported rectangular plate with a pressure load on it. We have our inputs right here where A is going to be the length of our long side of our rectangular plate and B is going to be the short side of our rectangular plate. And what do we mean by simply supported? So an in industry simply supported basically means that it does not transfer moments. So if we think of like rivets and fasteners there's going to be some amount of slip or deflection when you put a load on the plate. Therefore, just, it may be just be minor deflection at its ends, but there is going to be some slip and deflection. So we consider that simply supported. Whereas if this rectangular plate was welded down, we would consider that fixed supported. So we're looking at the case where we have a rectangular plate that has been riveted in somewhere and there's some differential pressure across it. So our inputs, as we continue down the list, we have our pressure load, which is going to be defined as Q in the equations over here in the table. We have our plate thickness, and then we have values that we go in to turn, find what they are. So we have beta, alpha, and gamma. This comes from the tables. You can see here we go, we determine our ratio A divided by B. When we get a value, um, we will find where it's located. If it's between two values, we linearly interpolate and we determine our beta, alpha, and gamma. And I wrote a VBA function to do that. It's called rectangular plate case one. And I'll go into that after we step through this and then we have our equations for the max stress at the center and max deflection at the center as given in Rourke's Stress and Strain book. So we can go through and adjust these numbers. Say for example, you know, I made I declared my long slide shorter than my short side. Well, the function spits out an error. That's a fail safe. And then we can see here we have, I can change these numbers, I get different values, and you can play what if. You can increase the pressure, see what, uh, you know, just play with it. And this is how you would do that. You would set this up as a preliminary analysis or to cross-validate your FEA results. And so now that you've seen how the tool works, um, we're going to go ahead and step into the code and figure out how to write this to return our beta, alpha, and gamma. And as you can see, if you can do it for this case, a lot of the other problems in work stretch and strain are going to include the same methodology. You have uh, reference tables that you have to 
find values and linearly interpolate so you can easily extend this to other load cases so that's the motivation behind all this so let's go ahead and step into the code to see how we got our beta alpha and gamma from this table so the first step is to declare a function we declared it rectangular underscore plate underscore case one and it takes two parameters the long length and short length of our rectangular plate as given in the table over here a and b and then we define some variables in this case I'm going to create our table or our list of values in the table so we have basically four rows our a divided by b our beta our alpha our gamma I'm declaring basically variants which can store anything it can be an array or whatever for all of those variables and then I am going to um, return alpha beta and gamma so that's three values I'm going to return so I declare an array of three values that stores three values and if you remember in Excel the index starts at zero so if I specify an array of two that's going to include zero one and two so that's three values so just FYI the first step I'm going to do is calculate my a over B and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my array list for uh, given in the table for A divided by B that ratio beta alpha and gamma and then so the next thing I want to do is uh, you can see in this table over here that the last column has an infinity so if it's greater than five we just go ahead and assign it these values over here so I have to create some cases and if I'm less than one well I don't have any values so um, you know if I'm between one and five then I have to linear interpolate so I'm gonna create a case statement for that three cases to evaluate where my a over B ratio is so my case that I'm gonna be comparing to or looking at is a divided by B so if my case is a divided by B is greater than the last value in the a underscore B array well then I know I'm in this infinity column right here so I just go ahead and I assign alpha beta and gamma I pick the last value in their list so that'd be over here on alpha beta and gamma and then I basically what it does is um, when you for Excel list they they go fill in values from left to right in one row so in order to return it as a column vector I have to transpose it so just remember that when you basically arrays in Excel are basically filled out from left to right so like um, when you write on paper um, the letters represent the values and you go from left to right if I want to make it a column vector I just transpose it so that's another key aspect about Excel that you really need to um, keep in the back of your mind so if my A over B ratio is less than 1 right here then I don't have any values to refer to in this table so I'm just gonna say it send an error message back and we saw that uh, when I was messing with the numbers in the Excel spreadsheet else if, if a divided by B is anything else then what I want to do is I want to go through and linearly interpolate find at which value a B is between and then linearly interpolate so that's what I'm doing here I'm trying to find the value at which a divided by B falls between and I'm looping through essentially the entire um, array list and then so my lower value and my upper value so those are the two values I'm gonna look at to see if it falls between and so if 
my a divided by b falls between those two values, then I'm going to linearly interpolate and return my beta, alpha, and gamma, and put those in my answer array list. And then once I'm done, I'm going to return the answer as a column vector. And then I will exit the loop, and I'm pretty much done. But this function right here, interpolation, that's written down here. I declared it private so that when um, I type it in Excel as a function, it won't see it. And uh, that just keeps things a little bit cleaner. And um, so that's how that function works. And so essentially what I'm doing, this loop, just to reiterate, I'm going through and I'm saying, okay, if A over B is between 1 and 1.2, then linearly they interpolate it. If it's not, then go to the next index. So we'll go from 1.2 to 1.4, check it. If it's not there, go from 1.4 to 1.6, check. And that's what this for loop is doing right there. It's going through each of these and making sure that, uh, checking to see if my um, a divided by b is between those. If it is, then it'll go through and interpolate or find those values for beta, alpha, and gamma. So that's how that works. And, um, you know, there's probably multiple ways to do this, but this kind of shows you an application of coding and uh, from a mechanical engineering point of view. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time, and this code will be posted on my website. So you guys have a good one. Adios.